So now let's create Man Candy's um, accent pose. So we'll go 10 frames forward. And by the way, going 10 frames forward and back is by up and down arrow keys in case I didn't mention it. And we'll just start working um, in the sort of highest level of detail. So the, for, the, for the accent, everything is sort of going to fly up. Um, so we'll get his body sort of up. A little bit forward. Um, take this a little bit. We can clear these guys' rotation, and then rotate them so he's sort of got his chest out. And likewise, we'll clear these guys' rotation first for the neck, and we'll clear this guy's location. Now we'll pull this guy up and stretch his neck. Really kind of get his reaction backwards like that. Don't worry about his head being like so. In the wrong place, we'll fix that later on. And we'll even take this guy and lift it up. Give it a nice stretch. I don't think the neck's going to bend here. You just that where it is and the shoulders as he goes up his shoulders are going to fly down we'll just pull them down like that and since the the face is doing so much in this pose let's tweak that so we'll go to the facial bones now first thing is this guy rather than being in a compressed state we'll pull the head up like so, and we'll pull the jaw open as wide as we can. Let's uh, clear these guys' location and then maybe even push them in. We can use our transform manipulators to see what we're doing. The eyes are going to be open. One of the interesting things is once you really deform the head like that, you can't really see these. Um, bones so we can temporarily clear the location of this and these just so we can see what we're doing and we can shift space here so we can get a bigger viewport for sure and so the eyes are going to be wide open here so let's scale them up and really exaggerate those open eyes and of course his brow is going to fly up as is this one and we'll scale this out scale this up more we can shift over this mesh so we can kind of see what's going on. So it's already starting to work a little bit. We'll pull, we'll clear these guys' rotation and pull them up a little bit. And we can even pull up the sides more to get more of a exaggerated feeling for this. Alt R. We can pull these back a little bit, pull these down. We can dilate his uh, pupil a lot. Can't see it, but it happens. Pull these down to squint down a little bit so that you can kind of get the more exaggerated face. these down. Always change your viewer a little bit as you're working just so you can see better what's going on. And uh, so this isn't scaled enough. A little bit down so it's in a more reasonable spot. And we can still 
Let me go back to camera view. We can still exaggerate his eye open position by grabbing these guys and moving them. up and down I don't know if you heard that but there was a horse trotting outside the Blender Institute at that moment you can, he has to look down now because he's so out like that and we can push it forward like that let's see maybe we can rotate this guy and sort of shrink his face away from the thing that freaks him out, like so. So that yeah, maybe that's enough of exaggeration. I'm not sure. Shift space. Maybe I got his neck a little bit too stretched, so I'm gonna go and pull it down a bit, like that. And as his um, as his um, body comes up, I'm gonna push his arms down maybe have them go into this position kind of a little bit and maybe this one like that Get forward uh -huh. One select at a time. Go like that. And maybe I overdid uh, the eye positions a bit so I can. Do something like that, and I can pull these down even if I want to. The nose controller. Pull that one down, so if you elongate his nose again. So, you know, something like this might work. Pull these down and back. something like that and so that's okay I can have these guys go a little bit higher and get his sort of accentuate his open mouth if I want to here and okay let's call that done Uh huh. There we go. So once again, just checking to see that I have everything posed. Hit the home key. Um, if you wanna, if you lose where your keys are in an action. Mm hmm. Haven't done the fingers yet. Something like that. And finally, the settling pose at the end, which we can cheat a little bit. Turn on all the layers we animated. Like so, go back to, to our neutral pose here. Let's uh, click on his body and do Shift O so we don't have that kind of slow. Thing. And if you right click your mouse down here where the numbers are in the action editor, you can actually select all the keys 
that are above that particular frame that you're hovering at and then so here's this pose then we can go 10 frames forward and hit shifty control key down grab our keys until the timeline or simply hit shift s and snap them to the current frame the reason I had the control key down was to keep things moving on um, integer keyframes which is very important when you're doing some animation not to allow your keys to lie in fractional frames it really will be a much bigger pain to animate and it might be fun for this final pose to kind of change his attitude a little bit so maybe I'll straighten his arms a little bit have them worse up by his sides like so have him in a more resolute kind of looking thing so we don't see his hands here it might not be that important to animate them scale them down a little bit or roll them in more of a fist or partial fist at least I'm going to go ahead and tweak a lot of this stuff soon anyway. Have his body a little bit forward. So. Have him a little bit more forward. Maybe I'll have his shoulders up a bit more. Maybe I'll make him more angry face too. I'm gonna hide his head bone because it's a little bit in the way. Shift space. Click on the mesh, shift O. Let's see if we can make him look more angry. So I guess he saw something that he didn't like. You can always intensify some expressions by making making characters squint a little bit more. Works a lot. Works almost for every expression, but not quite. Narrow his eyelids a little bit. And maybe lift them up into that squint too lift this lip up snarl him a little bit maybe yeah why not oops wrong control I meant to move this one we can key these where they are. Maybe close his jaw a little bit. Perhaps move this down somewhat. You can always use the manipulators. Can I see what you're doing? It's too much. That's good. Do the same for the other one. Maybe move that one in a little bit. Just a slight sneer. These are okay where they are. You can play with the attitude of the mouth itself. Like that. Make sure these are cleared, so on and so forth. It doesn't have to be perfect. So here's the beginnings of our take. Save it. Let's scrub through our keys. So it looks pretty okay but a little bit floaty and unconvincing it's just a basic breakdown 
So one of the problems with it, of course, is that we haven't thought about the timing yet. And we can use fairly normal timings. Takes are actually kind of an easy thing to do. They're not really super realistic um, animation, as you can tell. And um, there's a lot of convention about them. And I think um, different studios use different timings for their takes and different animations too. For CG animation, I I'm thinking that and for in Man Candy's case, I'll keep his take a little bit slower than is common in some cases. So we'll just kind of tweak the timing up. It's kind of slow right now, as you might have noticed. So I'll move this in maybe about half that distance and and this one again by half. So it's where the other one was. And the recovery might take a little bit longer to get from that extreme expression over to over to the final pose. I'll put it maybe over here. Like so let's see how that looks. And that's pretty okay. And we'll save that. And then we can tweak this by adding some poses in between the different main poses and we no longer have to really worry about keeping posing every single thing so we can do basically runs on torso or head animation or on the arms and get the in-between poses moving a little bit more naturally so everything doesn't move together and there's several principles that we can think about while we're doing that um, we obviously already have a lot of squash and stretch um, in our animation. Um, like squash here, stretch here on the accent. We have anticipation and we have follow through. Um, what we can do is have um, um, some overlapping action. For instance, like notice how right now he's going from pose to pose at the same speed for every single part of his body and we can delay parts and advance parts of his body's uh, stop his arms from moving at the same speed so we can actually change the timing of some of these keyframes here but also for the sub parts like for instance for the arm or the hand you can make the hand um, animate a, a bit slower than the, the forearm and flop around so uh, it'll oppose it in action as we'll see.